Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. This is Mining 101 and today I'll be sharing with you an interesting topic about drilling and blasting. This channel is dedicated to you, junior engineers, junior supervisors and mining fanatics in general, people who are passionate about mining. Please do subscribe below to look out for more mining tips, more mining operational tips. Let's dive into our topic quickly. Drilling and blasting. Mm. Ring some bells? <laughs> All right. Before you do your drilling and blasting, there are some things which are involved. Operations. The first things that you do first is, one, make the workplace safe. And in so doing, sorry, I won't cover this in much more detail because each topic is broad. All you need to know is the tips and then research more, ask more questions. I'm just going to open your mind so that you know what's involved in drilling and blasting. So, in starting to make your workplace safe, get at least one competent person or two or three to start making the work safe it's important that you make the workplace safe because your equipment is going to be deployed there all your team members you're going to be working with are going to be there so the place is supposed to be safe technically safety is key and before i go any further let me mention this is typically for underground drilling and blasting. So, as you start making your workplace safe, as you reach your access to your workplace, ensure there's good ventilation. Continue into your workplace by first starting with burying down all loose rocks. And this is done by burying down from good to bad. You're moving from the good place, burying down all the way to the bad place. You do this while you're washing and burying down. We wash the face because you want to expose all loose rocks. You want the face to be clean so that you can see all misfires, noting all the misfires and noting the ground conditions. Also, bearing in mind that explosives, once they detonate, that impact shakes the ground. You can't even say shake, moves the ground, the vibrations, the impact. So, some areas previously supported might be needing reinforcements. That's why you check. And that's why you move from good to bad. Because the worst place is the supported end. The newly opened excavations. The ones you've just blasted from the previous shift. So, as you are doing your work, make sure you are in the supported end and only from there you're going to start in the actual work preparations after you've done that remove the main and your equipment or tools you are using such as your pinch bars and put them on your gear rack roll back the horse and put it on the gear rack as well and as a supervisor now you can move your equipment now into the excavation or your drive or whatever it is you're declining to now go and mark the material using the LHD load hold dump. Ring some bells? Yeah. So mark the material from the previous blast. Once the material has been marked out, then go back, inspect the area. Ensure that everything is marked out properly 
you can rewash again doesn't matter it matters so long you can see what you want to see oh, these files if any have been left or anything you did not see while you were making it safe once that is done second thing that you do is now mark your excavation for support this is optional if you have an experienced operator you're just gonna instruct him where to support that's all but for operators needing your assistance you can mark for where they're going to support the standard is always from grid line all the way up through the excavation span up to the red line red line to red line and you support all the way up to the face zero tolerance all the way up to the face remember this is in the situation where the ground condition is bad or very bad not good enough for self support. If your ground condition is okay, there might be changes. This is just the case where now the ground condition is not good enough. So you can mark the face for support, not the face, pardon me, the excavation span where you're going to do your support. You don't support the face, no, that's where you're going to drill. That's where you're going to place your explosives. The face is left supported, but the excavation span, the roof and the sides, that's where you support. And in most cases, most mines, most mines with uh, fairly competent rock to bad ground conditions, the support that they use is uh, Welded wire with split sets. That's primary support. Later we are gonna install maybe cable boards. But for a shift that is involved in blasting, obviously your support is just going to be welded mesh with split sets. So the key thing to note for your support is the number of welded mesh you are going to use for your support. If you know the excavation span and uh, your support size, the standard mostly that is used is 2.4 by 3 meters, you can know the number of wire meshes that you are going to use to support the, uh, the excavation span. It changes due to differences in the blast advance. If you have a good blast advance, it's very consistent. Sometimes, you know, a bit longer, shorter. That's why you are there to see that. Uh, you you put everything in order. You know, you note how much material you're going to use, and that is going to help you to plan. So. Not the number of wire meshes and split sets. Quickly, after you draw the pattern for drilling, after you draw the pattern for drilling, you can start your drilling. Move your grid now. A border, if you are blessed with the border, border for support, or like most of us. <laughs> We use the same drill rigs we use for drilling, you know, blast holes for support. So, who knows? That's the way. So, saves the money. Yeah. So, after that, you move your equipment. Obviously, the pre shift checks have been done on the equipment already. And all you need to do now is let the auto electrician plug the machine, boom a box, and power it up. And the operator and the 
exporter do their job while you are monitoring. Once breathing for support is done and the support is installed, the wire mesh is nicely and beautifully installed, you can now remove your drum rig from the face if you have too much material left on the ground and near the face. Remember while he was supporting obviously some chunks of rocks were falling in. Those could accumulate to you know which dangerous numbers massive. If not, you can now start marking for your end drilling when you not going to blast. Otherwise you can the rig and the loader can scoop the accumulated material without it clean it up and start marking now your end for drilling it's always important to measure the size of the span remember differences in measurements and uh, drilling you know at times if you're working in let's say a football drive you're not even going to require a layout, but always pay particular attention to your layout. Make sure you understand your layout and interpret what your layout is saying. Because you don't want to buy Don't want that. So, mark your drilling pattern. After mark your drilling pattern, Remember, that is after counter checking that there are no sockets. Otherwise, if there are sockets, plug them. If there are misfires, treat the misfires. You know how to treat the misfires. Oh, you did not. We'll look that into. We'll look it. We'll, we'll cover it. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. Just look forward to another lecture. We'll cover everything. My operations will deal with it on this channel. Yeah, so like the sockets. Make sure instruct the operator to drill only where you've marked the host to be drilled. Always that's key. Always drill away from socket at least at a distance not less than 150 millimeters okay so start drilling with the lifters bottom holes drill your holes your lifters and put sleeves holy pipes so that the holes are not closed up because chunks will be falling and you continue drilling after that, continue drilling the remaining holes. If you are using a double boom, well, until all your holes are done, you can even now drill all your cuts or even. <laughs> That's how it's done. No. Remember, if you ought to blast, you ought to blast. Once your drilling is done, and you've seen that all your holes are done. You can remove the machine. The operating this port, I can now go. And now that's the time for person in charge, the engineer in charge, to clear the section. You know, and clean the holes if need be using you know, the equipment. Obviously, you do cover block, but use them. Clean the holes. You are doing that to prepare for charging. After that, obviously, explosives were ready. Nice. If not, you can clear the section and only blasters. Only blasters. People involved with the blasting operations should remain the section. Yep. 
you've cleared your section, put your explosives nicely, detonators and cartridges. I don't know if you use pumpy boy motions, but whichever. Note your holes and make only the required primers. Primers, 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 actual bone. Otherwise, you can just go to your end and then put your detonators, your numbers according to your timing and then put your cartridges there and as you make a primer, you set it in a hole. This ensures that you are not left with a needed number of primers because if you don't want, you don't want that. You only make primers that you need to use. So make your primers and start charging using your charging sticks. Charge Charge, dump the whole charge, dump the whole charge, dump the whole charge, dump the whole charge. I'm just passionate about mine, so no funny stuff. Afterwards, you touch your detonating coat, coat it. Everyone is peered out of the section. Be sure it's cleared out again. And as you walk out from the face, you connect that thing to do the job. Your instantaneous electrical detonator. And move out of the section. Leave a poster, banner saying, charged up earlier, keep away, charged up. Walk out of the section. At the right time, check. You've already signed with other person in charge for other areas. You've signed your blasting token cards. You've come to check that everyone is out of the section and at the right time, Fire you blast. <clears throat> and there ends today's lecture. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to my channel for more tips on mining operations. I'm a mining engineer. I'm Maxiami Inok. You can look me up, LinkedIn. Au revoir. I appreciate your response, whichever. That's how we grow, we learn, we share. Bye.